so we're going to start and um, first I wanted to mention, you know, wanted you to think about why study abroad, we want you to think about study abroad as an investment, it's an investment financially, it's an investment in your time, but we want you to think about it as an investment in your education, having study abroad on your transcripts, having it on your resume later on after graduation will give you that edge. Um, less than 10% of US undergrads study abroad. So it will definitely set you apart from 90% of your peers. It is um, definitely all these reasons that we have listed here, you've probably thought about one or two, but it definitely will help you compete in that global marketplace and give you something that employers are looking for. It That intercultural competence, that ability to talk to, relate to people from other cultures. So that is definitely an invaluable life-changing and life-enhancing skills uh, that you'll learn when you're abroad. And then just to give you a little background about AIFS, I chose a little bit about myself, but AIFS has been doing study abroad since 1964. We have um, study abroad programs as well as internships. Uh, we do semester, summer, and winter sessions. Um, none of our programs have language requirements, although obviously in programs like the ones in Spain, France, Germany, you do have the ability to learn a, a foreign language or improve your skills if you have um, taken the language already. The programs are open to all majors, so we don't really have programs that are major specific. Um, we do offer a lot of courses um, that will probably count as gen ed courses for you and um, our different university partner universities have different courses that may work for um, your different majors. It's important to know that our fees are guaranteed. So our program fees are released over a year and a half prior to our program dates. And once they are um, published, the fees are guaranteed in US dollars and they won't change according to um, currency fluctuations. Um, these are our locations, our country locations. Um, we have um, 35 different program cities. And uh, because many of our countries have several different cities, for example, in France, we're in Paris, Cannes, and Grenoble. And in um, Spain, for example, we have five different sites, including Granada, Madrid, Barcelona. So uh, that is sort of the uh, homepage of our website. So this is where you would go and click on your countries of interest and you would find all the information for the different programs. Um, it is definitely important to know what your program fees include. You, um, with AIFS, they include pre-departure support. So we have our program um, enrollment counselors that will help you through the application process. And then our program managers who will help you once you're accepted in the program, they will help you get ready for your study abroad program, um, in, including visa support if that is uh, required by the country of your program. Your tuition is included in our program fee, your housing is included, and we have several different options. I'll talk about that in a second. We do have meal plans included. Um, you will have a resident director and staff on site that will be there to make sure that the program runs as smoothly as possible. And we all know that real life happens. If something happens, you'll have people to go to that will help you resolve the issue. My debit card won't work. I don't know what's going on. They'll help you figure it out. So that's the great thing about our resident directors and staff. Lots of excursions and weekly cultural activities included. It's really important that you hit all those cultural highlights, right? You learn about the art, architecture, um, and the customs of the country where you're living. We also have a lot that are related to um, a lot of different fields, a lot of service learning, a lot of volunteering. Um, so a great ways to really immerse yourself in the culture and learn by doing, which is really important. Uh, we do have optional flights and airport transportation if 
uh, you want to take a group flight, that is definitely an option. It makes it a lot easier and um, the prices are, are pretty competitive with uh, what's published out there. Health and travel insurance are included, so you'll have, um, you won't have to worry about any um, medical incident that you have while you're abroad. You'll be able to access medical care and you'll have 100% coverage um, during the program, including um, medical insurance for up to 30 days after the program if you are going to travel. And then um, once you come back, we have a really strong alumni um, ambassador program that works a lot with um, our returning students and a lot of career development opportunities too, which is really interesting. So just to give you a little um, information about academics, um, the traditional study abroad internships we have community engagement service learning programs so we have a variety of programs and every uh, partner university offers it's sort of like our systems here in the states the different universities have different majors different courses so um, on our website we do have all of the lists of courses you'll be able to take those to your academic advisor and see how well they'll transfer um, the, we offer semester and academic year programs, summer programs, and winter intercession programs. We call them January term or J term. Um, and the length also um, will vary according to our partner university in, um, in the foreign country. Um, just to, a few things to note is that the programs are open to all majors. We don't have a lot that are very major specific. Um, we, it is important that you stay on track for graduation, right? It's important that study abroad not put you behind. So you'll find courses for your major, your minor, you'll be able to fulfill electives. Um, on all of our programs, um, we do offer courses taught in English. And so no previous knowledge of the foreign language is required. But as I mentioned before, you can continue with your foreign language if that is something that you're interested in as well. And then um, some of the things that are offered outside of the classroom, you'll have um, your housing and it varies according to what is offered locally so in some places we offer student apartments you'll live with other students from the program um, homestays is a great option it's a great way to really immerse yourself in the life and culture and really be able to practice language skills if you go to a country that speaks a foreign language really learn um, what it's like to live like a native uh, so those are a lot of fun. Residence halls as well. You can live with students, international and local students in those residence halls. Um, meal plans. Each program is different because, of course, it depends on what is available locally. But, um, for example, if you live in a homestay, you get home cooked meals, which is a fantastic option. In some of the countries, you also have kitchen access, which is nice. Um, in our Italian programs, we have fantastic meal plans that are meal tickets for local uh, restaurants. And you can imagine the Tuscan cuisine in Florence, the Roman cuisine in Rome, super popular, that meal plan. Um, students absolutely love it. And then um, all of those excursions and cultural activities, as I mentioned, um, we do things like cooking classes, we do um, language exchange partners with native students, we do the cultural highlights, right, you have to see the Alhambra when you go to Granada. Um, and so there is a wide variety of things. There's generally something going on every week, right, so that you are um, busy learning and um, seeing probably what you're studying in the classroom. 
Um, so the steps. Um, first, we encourage everyone to think about what your goals are, right? And, and I always encourage students to write it down. Think about um, what you'd like to accomplish, why you want to go abroad, and what your goals are for study abroad. And it's great to write it down. Maybe make some lists, maybe make some journal entries. It's really a good idea to start thinking about what your goals are. Are they um, to learn a new skill, like a foreign language, to um, complete some major um, courses, some elective courses? Think about them and write them down. And then most importantly, your next um, thing is to go and make an appointment with your study abroad office, right? Your SAGE office. There is where you are going to talk to your program advisors on which programs you're eligible for and which are approved. So that is super important. We know in right currently, there are certain programs that are approved and others that are not. So it is important to go and check out with them what is available. Speak to your academic advisors as well. So um, maybe bring them lists of courses, course descriptions, which are available on our website. So you can see how courses transfer and that will probably help you make decisions on which program is best for you. Um, if an AIFS program is what you're interested in, then you would start by applying, creating a student account on the AIFS website and um, starting your application process. We also definitely encourage you to apply for a passport. Um, if you don't have a passport, apply for your first time passport. If your passport is going to expire within six months after your return of your study abroad program, you need to um, definitely renew your passport. Um, my son just renewed his and it took them two and a half months. So it they are taking longer than I've ever seen them. So definitely apply with lots of time for a passport. And if you're over 16, they're good for 10 years. So it is a great thing to get on as soon as possible. Um, here, this uh, QR code is something that you can scan if you'd like more information on AFS scholarships and grants. Just so you know, we do offer up to um, we about 50% of the students that uh, participate in AFS programs uh, receive some kind of scholarship or grant. We give away about $800,000 worth of scholarships and grants every academic year. Um, and they could be as small as an affiliate grant for the summer, which is $200, and as much as um, half the cost of your program fees, which is up to something like $10,000. So um, definitely apply for AFS scholarships and grants. I'm sure your SAGE office and your financial aid office would be able to help uh, provide you with a lot of information on the different scholarships that are out there. There are some amazing study abroad scholarships out there, as well as scholarships for college students. So definitely apply, apply, apply for all that you possibly can. Um, speak to your financial aid office. See. Um, if you haven't filled out a FAFSA, fill one out. Um, the FAFSA for 2022-23 um, opens in a few short weeks. So uh, that is something that you wanna do early. That way your eligibility can be determined early and you can speak to someone and, and that is important that knowledge is important to help them gauge and, and figure out how much you're eligible for. So definitely do it as early as you can. Um, and uh, definite fundraising as well. Tomorrow at 1030, we'll be discussing creative fundraising ideas. I'll be giving that presentation as well. So um, if you want some ideas that students have shared with us about uh, creative fundraising ideas. Students have done all kinds of fun things to raise money to help go abroad as well. So that is sort of the third pillar of funding. 
And then I just wanted to quickly mention that we do offer internships at many of our different programs in person, but um, your office mentioned that they might wanted to talk about the virtual office. Uh, options that we have in the future. Um, virtually, we only offer these internships called uh, Virtuoso. Global Experiences is our um, internship division. And uh, these internships uh, are virtual. They are teleworking. And uh, students can do an internship from their home with an international company in many of these different fields. We offer them for eight weeks and for 12 weeks in um, fall, spring, and summer. And uh, these are some of the fields and uh, these are some of the program inclusions, which is really interesting. We do a lot of career development with our internship students as well. Clifton strengths, workshops, resume, cover letter support, that kind of thing. All right, these are some of the cities. So this again would be a virtual internship where you would work for this company. The company would be abroad, but you would be work from um, home. All right. And that Paula. is more or less my presentation. Hi, Paula. Oh, gosh, I just sorry. wanted to, before you end and start yes, asking questions, I wanted to just follow on with your internships part yes. of the conversation yeah. to let students know that if they are seeking academic credit for those internships, that the Center for Internships and Community Engagement um, is has you know let us know that they are working with students and departments to help them collaborate together to make sure that internships that they participate in, whether in person or virtually, can uh, count for academic credit. So, uh, that is something I want students to know that you know this could be uh, something that you know if your if your major or minor requires an internship, um, this is this is something that will possibly be, bit, be a good fit for you, and the CICB office supports it. Awesome. All right, so I think I'm finishing just on time, a minute early. Amazing. My New York talking skills got me there. <laughs> um, if anyone has any questions, um, you can turn on your camera or turn on your um, mic or put them in the chat and I'd be happy to answer questions. Hi, um, I was wondering, so I'm currently a senior right now. I wanted to study abroad my junior year, but you know, with COVID and everything, yeah. it, it put a pause on a lot of things. So I never really got the opportunity. Um, and I kind of gave up looking because I was just like, what even are my options? I didn't want to do anything virtually. I wanted to really experience um, study abroad in person. So I'm currently a senior now in my um, fall semester. Um, obviously it's too late for me to do it this year. So I'm on track to graduate, but do you guys, I'm sorry, I came a little bit late, so I'm not sure if you talked about this already, but do you have many like postgraduate options or could I even like, I don't know if you know the answer to this, but, um, let's say I were to graduate this spring, but I still wanted to study abroad. Like would that affect my, um, opportunities here with AIFS? So I think two things to keep in mind is unfortunately we don't offer any programs with graduate credit um, we don't um, students who have already graduated can participate in the program but the credits would still be undergraduate we would recommend that you take um, as high level courses as you possibly could while you were abroad and then see once you do enroll in your graduate program of choice, try and have that transcript evaluated by your graduate school to see if they would transfer. Um, sometimes because they come from a foreign university, it might be a possibility, but um, you would, my recommendation would be keep in mind that they may not count as graduate credits. And then financial aid would be the second thing to keep in mind, right? Once you've graduated, then you're no longer eligible for financial aid as an undergraduate. So um, 
program fees would be 100% out of pocket. You could apply for, I'm not sure how scholarships would work again, because generally you have to be enrolled as an undergraduate for most scholarships, um, but you could fundraise, that's for sure. Um, you could fundraise and, and to help offset a lot of those costs. Those okay. are my two things I would keep in mind. Yeah, thank and you. I'm so sorry. I I completely understand. Oh, Generally, it's so hard. Yeah, I know. It's you. Y'all got the short end of the stick for sure. I um, know. And I was even sad. thinking. Well, I know. You know. Obviously, for my major at least at Cal State Fullerton, they don't offer many study abroad programs. I'm a kinesiology major, so my aunt she went to UCLA. She studied abroad in Italy. Um, and she didn't take any classes, I think, that were even for her major. It was mostly just kind of like Elective. to get more, yeah. you know, immersed in the culture. I think she took yeah. some wine. She went to Florence. So she took some like wine courses and cooking yeah. classes, language um, classes. Yes. So those could all be for me, too, if I, you know, didn't right. really want to do anything for specifically my major. Right, right. I know that your kinesiology faculty does do a program. I remember. Yes, yes. Kinesiology it's like is actually two weeks, one of our I think, stronger. in Greece. Yeah. In Greece, yeah. correct. There's a Greece program, um, which obviously was suspended, but it's back in talks for this coming summer. And you could definitely talk to John Cleese and, and Matt Llewellyn about possibly yeah. um, still joining as, as a graduate because students who have graduated have previously participated in the department programs. But I did want to recommend you talking to Eileen Vickery, our advisor, because there's also an ex reciprocal exchange program. And not to talk about things other than no, AI. No, no, no. Um, we want to help her do the what's best yeah, for her. But there is a, a kinesiology program, um, possibly that could be um, relevant to you know you as a kinesiology major. That um, right now, just so students understand the the climate we're in. We are allowing students to do study abroad on programs operated by the CSU system through the Chancellor's Office of the CSU IP programs. And then we are also, um, as long as that location and program is approved by the Chancellor's Office, the students can participate and apply to that program. Um, so we have students abroad this fall on those programs. And then similarly, programs that we have with reciprocal exchange partners that are co-located in those same approved program locations that the IP program offers, uh, students are allowed to, again, participate in those programs. So to break it down, we have a CSU IP program in Japan. Sorry, Japan was, was not in India, uh, or South Korea. Um, so, and we had students doing that program at Yonsei University. So we were allowed to also send students to our reciprocal exchange partner in South Korea at Chunan University. So um, we, we have students doing uh, the IP program in the UK, and that reciprocal exchange program I was telling you about, so is with a program for uh, reciprocal exchange program partner in the UK. So the likelihood that that program would be approved for students to apply to um, where is, is good. Um, I don't want to guarantee anything, but it's good. And then this fall, programs in person through our provider partners like AIFS, unfortunately, were not approved. But looking forward to spring, that the green light has not been given, but the absolute you know no has not been given, which was the fall decision. And so for spring, there uh, we are still awaiting the decision about which uh, programs with our partners in addition, uh, like like AIFS, in addition to exchange and IP programs could be offered. So, um, but definitely talk to Eileen Vickery if you haven't had an advising appointment yet, you probably have, um, because there is that one, I wanna say it's a Welsh university that has been uh, particularly um, 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 I think Matt Long has a close relationship with that university, and he um, is always screening students to participate in that exchange uh, because of the academic uh, fit for kinesiology students. So Thank you so much. Yeah.